Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to yet another episode of Roundup. We have some really interesting stories lined up for you today. Let's first start with the headlines. Countries all over the world are reintroducing restrictions after South Africa identified the potentially more transmissible Omicron variant of COVID-19. The EU and many other Western countries have so far banned all travel from Southern African countries and many countries are reintroducing mask wearing in certain circumstances. However, many condemn these harsh responses with the World Health Organization saying that these travel bans harm global cooperation. Israel's Prime Minister has urged world leaders to immediately end nuclear talks with Iran after it decided to start using advanced machines to enrich uranium at an underground plant. Russian Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov has warned that Europe could be returning to what he called the nightmare of military confrontation. He made the comments at a European security conference in Sweden when discussing his country's aggression towards Ukraine. Mr. Lavrov floated the idea of a new European security pact to try and stop NATO from expanding further east. Thousands of people are still without power in Scotland and northern England, six days after Storm Arwen hit the UK. Around 16,000 homes do not have electricity, and the Prime Minister Boris Johnson says he expects the majority to have supply restored by the end of this week. International football star Lionel Messi won his seventh Ballon d'Or on Tuesday. The award, voted on by international journalists, coaches and captains, has attracted much criticism after Messi's seventh win. It's not always easy to tell if something is fake news. We have Madasir to help us decipher real from fake news. Fake news. It is everywhere. Did you know that fake news spread six times faster on Twitter than the truth? And the fake news that is being spread globally through the internet affects every aspect of our daily lives. Rumours about political leaders affecting who we vote for to crazy diet trends that change what we eat. All of these are influenced by the information we consume from online mediums and much of it is false. What is fake news? So fake news is any piece of information or a report or a story that is factually incorrect or is misleading or is designed on purpose to make you believe something that isn't true. And the recent examples are about uh, the COVID vaccine that it will implant a chip in your uh, body or that COVID was caused by 5G technology. Now, all of these aren't true. Why is there so much of it? Well, there's so much fake news because somebody has something to gain from it by making fake news. And so that could be a politician who wants to tarnish the reputation of his opponent, or it might be somebody who wants to make money by clickbait and on websites. How does it spread? So it spreads by you and me and by anyone who has a mobile phone. And that is basically because social media and WhatsApp and things like that are platforms where you can share things and where people will share the, those things further on to their friends and families and so your content or the content can reach potentially thousands and even millions and millions of people and also social media is geared towards you know conflict and shocking stories and things like that so it kind of promotes that and the algorithms promote those things. Most people cannot tell the difference between real or fake news. How can we tell if something is fake? So if you look at something and it sounds really unbelievable or exaggerated, then it probably is. So just take a step back and try to analyse whether you think that might be fake news. Ask yourself a few questions. So that is, where did this story come from? What is its source? Who's written it? And also, does it provide any solid evidence or hard facts? Does it give any facts or figures? Does it link to a more reputable institution? Or does it quote anyone? And also, does it have any pictures or videos to back it up? But also check if it's being reported widely elsewhere by major news organisations and people you know that you can trust. What are good habits to get into when consuming the news? Well, I'd say firstly, don't consume too much news because news is often distressing and can also be negative. So it could have a bad impact on you. So just limit your intake. 
but also be very wary of social media. I'd say don't be on social media unless you really need to and don't believe everything that you read. Just because it's written down doesn't necessarily mean it's true. And also read widely. Don't just depend on one news source. Read from a, different, a lot of different news sources and stick to the trusted websites and news organisations which you know are reputable and are well established. The news you get from other sources may be questionable, but you can be rest assured that the news you get here at Roundup is all real. We really need to be alert about everything that we read, don't we, Jungi? Yes, but fortunately, you can all be rest assured that everything you see here on MTA is real and factual. Now let's go to Nasser for a regular Friday sermon summary. Assalamu alaikum, my dear brothers and sisters. As you know, our beloved Hazur, Ayyadullah Ta'ala, bin Aslil Aziz, has been delivering his Friday sermons regarding the companions of the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, who took part in the Battle of Badr. Last Friday, Hazur started to speak about Hadrat Abu Bakr, radiallahu anhu, the first Khalifa of Islam. Did you know Hadrat Abu Bakr was the first person to accept Islam outside the Holy Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's family? During this week's Friday sermon, our beloved Hazur introduced the background of Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu in great detail. Hazur said that Hazrat Abu Bakr's name was Abdullah and his father's name was Uthman ibn Amir. According to narrations, his mother's name was either Salma or Layla bint Sakhr. It was said that he was born in 573 AD. He was from the tribe of the Quraysh called Tayyim ibn Murrah. Before Islam, his name was Abdul Ka'bah which the Holy Prophet وسلم, later changed to Abdullah. During the Friday sermon, Hazur explained the titles which were given to Hazrat Abu Bakr anhu. As mentioned earlier, Hazur Ta'ala bin Asil Aziz stated that Hazrat Abu Bakr was known by the names of Atiq and Sadiq. It was recorded that he was given the title of Sadiq even before Islam due to his high levels of honesty. It is also recorded that when the Holy Prophet وسلم, would inform him of any news, he would confirm it right away. Thus, he became known by this title. For example, when the Holy Prophet وسلم, was shown the vision of the Isra, the night journey, in which he travelled in a dream to Jerusalem, people went to Hazrat Abu Bakr and asked him whether he approved this claim of the Holy Prophet وسلم. Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu immediately confirmed and thus became known as Siddiq. Beloved Hazur ayyadullah ta'ala bin Asr al-Aziz also said that even before Islam, Hazrat Abu Bakr radiallahu anhu never came near idol worship or bowed down before any idol. He was against drinking alcohol and never drank it even before the time of Islam. When asked why he never drank alcohol, he said it was because he was mindful of his honour and piety, which cannot be maintained by one who drinks alcohol. Dear brothers and sisters, from this we can learn so much and understand why we were told to never drink alcohol, as doing so makes someone unable to maintain his or her righteousness and piety. Beloved Hazur mentioned Hadrat Abu Bakr's acceptance of Islam. Hazur said that when Hadrat Abu Bakr heard that Khadija's husband had claimed to be a prophet like Moses السلام, Hazrat Abu Bakr went to the Holy Prophet وسلم, and accepted him. This was just a brief summary of last week's Friday sermon, which was filled with many interesting stories and incidents. We hope you are able to hear the full Friday sermon, which can be found on mta.tv. Until next time, Assalamu alaikum. Zakla Nasser, and as always, we encourage you to watch the whole Friday sermon, which is available online. Did you know it's a very special time of the year for our Jewish brothers and sisters around the world, Jangi? That's right, they've been celebrating Hanukkah for the past few days, and we'll go to Kavabu to learn more about this Jewish holiday. السلام عليكم في هذا الأسبوع يحتفل اليهود في عيد الخانوكا 
يتم شراء واستهلاك أكثر من 30 مليون كاكة توغنيا عشان نتعرف أكثر على عيد الخانوكا استضفنا صديقتي أيلت اللي بتعيد عيد الخانوكا شلوم أنا أيلت كابلان أنا عمري 11 سنة ومنتعلم أنا وسيدنا بصف ثناء اللغة يهود وعرب عارفين على عيد الخانوكا الخانوكا من عاوي بدون ذكرة المعجزة التي حصلت لليهود إيش هي المعجزة اللي صارت؟ في الماضي زمان اليونانيون احتلوا الأرض وهدموا بيت المقدس زمان استعملوا الزيت لإشعال المصباح فقام اليونانيون بسكب الزيت على الأرض فضلت كمية قليلة للزيت فكروا اليهود إنه ما راح تكفي الكمية لإشعال المصباح ليوم واحد حصلت معجزة وكفت وكف الزيت لثمان أيام ولهذا السبب إحنا اليهود من عيد عيد الخنوكا ثمان أيام وكل يوم ندوي شمعة واحدة شو بيميز عيد الخنوكا؟ اللي بيميز عيد الخنوكا هو في أكل بناكلها بالخنوكا اسمها سوفجانيا هي عبارة عن كعكة مقلية بالزيت ومحشي بالمربى في لعبة اسمها سيفون في عليها حروف اللي بتدل على المعجزة التي حصلت لليهود ناس جدولها يابو اليهود اللي بعيدوا عيد الخنوكا بريت البلاد بحكوا الناس جدولها ياشا وفي الخنوكيا هي عبارة عن شمعة دان ندوي فيه شمعة واحدة كل يوم شكرا أيلة على المعلومات وكل عام وانت بخير خنوكا سماع تدا تعالوا معنا نشوف زينة الخنوكا في حيفا ברוך אתה אדוני, אלוהינו מלך העולם, שעשה ניסים לאבותינו, וציוונו ליד לקנר של חנוכה. אמן. Just as Hanukkah ends, we are also beginning a new month in the Islamic calendar. Let's go to the Canada studios to find out which month we are in now. Assalamu alaikum and welcome back to Roundup. Previously, we have been talking about the Islamic months. Sherry, Today, what are you doing here? Uh, sorry. Assalamu alaikum. It's finally December. This means this is the last month in the Gregorian calendar. But it's only the fifth month in the Islamic Hijri calendar, which is... Rabi'u Salis, right? Since last month was Rabi'u Sani, Sani as in second, then this must be Rabi'u Salis. Salis as in third, right? No! Let's go meet Marbi Farooq Tahir Sahib and find out what this month is really about. So the fifth month in the Islamic calendar that follows Rabi'u Thani is known as Jamada al Awwal. And this year, it spans from December 5th to January 3rd. Now, if we look at Islamic history, there are a number of events that occur during this month. If we go to 2 Hijri, there was the expedition of Ushaira. The Holy Prophet ﷺ was informed about some danger that was looming around Medina. So he took a few companions with him and set out just to make sure that everything was okay. Though there was no battle, the Holy Prophet ﷺ was able to form a friendly alliance with an Arab tribe. Now, if we move forward to 6 Hijri, there was the expedition of Banu Lahyan. The people of Banu Lahyan martyred 10 Muslims unjustly. And so to seek justice from those people, the Holy Prophet ﷺ set on this journey. Upon his return, the Holy Prophet ﷺ has been reported to famously recite the prayer that we are supposed to recite when we return from a journey. And this prayer is, Aibuna Taibuna Abiduna Li Rabbina Hamidun, which means that we return seeking repentance and in a state of worship to our Lord and we praise Him. In more recent history of Jamaat e Ahmadiyya, the first ever Jalsa Salana that was held in Qadian happened during this month. And we all witnessed the completion of the first hundred years of Khilafat e Ahmadiyya also during this month. Jazakallah Rabbi Saab. So today we learned that during this month, a few expeditions took place in early Islam. And we also learned that in some recent history, we celebrated a hundred years of Khilafat Ahmadiyya. That's your run up for today. I'm Musaf Ahmed, reporting from MT International, Canada Studios. See you next month in Jumada Usani.
Sakala, for that piece, as always, very informative from Canada. Indeed, Jangi, but for now, we're going to take a look at your views about the topics we covered today. We are living in the age of media when news and information are just a click away. So with this abundant influx of news, how can we differentiate between the real and the fake news? So, first of all, get on your critical thinking cap. This may not look like one. Anyway, first of all, check, check the source that you are using. Is it authentic or not? Secondly, check alternative sources. Thirdly, examine the evidence. And finally, see the news from different angles and perspectives. Yes, I know, this analysis is not easy. But in the passage of time, your intuitive skills will improve and you will be able to spot the truth among the gimmicks. Jazakallah. Hadika says, fake news are fake news that tells lies. Fake news often looks like real news for people to believe. Such lies can harm politics and society because they can influence people's opinions, political decisions and elections. In addition, money is made with fake news. You have to be careful to see what is real news and what is fake news. Atiyah says one easy way to tell fake from true is to look at the source of the information. The second step is to ask whether it makes sense. Finally, follow your gut. It is smarter than you think. Remember to keep an eye out on our social media for a preview of our topics and some exclusive content. Finally today, we have a fantastic report from some kids in America who are doing great things for their community. Let's take a look. Assalamu alaikum. My name is Tanzila Khan. I am from the York Harris Brook Jamaat. I am serving as the Nasadas Hizmat al Help Secretary. We have refugee families, mainly Afghani families, who will be resettling in our area. The local Nasadat and Atfar wanted to help these refugees come into Harrisburg. We had the donation drive and collected food, clothing, and household items. Alhamdulillah, we were able to collect a lot of things, including rice, flour, children's clothing, dishes, utensils, and much more. We are buying these things from refugees of Afghanistan. I feel blessed for this opportunity to help others and to fulfill our duty towards Hakukulibat. We also made cards to welcome the refugees that said, simple messages on them such as welcome to harrisburg and my best wishes are with you all we hope these cards will help these families feel welcomed and safe imagine how you feel if you had to leave everything behind your school your friends all your clothes and you have to come to a country where you don't even speak their language that's how they're refugee feel so i thought that we should give them some stuff i encourage everybody else to um to do it too alumnia is inshallah gonna help us and guide us and inshallah the refugees will, will be happy and safe inshallah assalamu alaikum what a fantastic episode we went all around the world again it really was it was a great episode today but you know what i'm looking forward to even more great content in the coming episodes but unfortunately that's all we have for today Make sure you send us your feedback via email to roundup at mta.tv and follow us on social media for lots of behind the scenes content. Until next time, Assalamu Alaikum.